Dear friends in Christ, during Lent, we have been preparing for the celebration of our Lord's Paschal mystery. On this day, our Lord Jesus Christ entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph. The people welcomed him with palms and shouts of praise, but the path before him led to self-giving, suffering, and death. Today, we greet him as our king, although we know his crown is thorns and his throne a cross. We follow him this week from the glory of the palms to the glory of the resurrection by way of the dark road of suffering and death. United with him in his suffering on the cross, may we share his resurrection and new life. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with thy help, Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy into the celebration of those mighty acts whereby thou didst give us life and immortality through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. Glory be to thee, O Lord. When the disciples were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The Gospel of Christ. Praise be to thee, O Christ. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is right to praise thee, Almighty God, for the acts of love by which thou hast redeemed us through thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The Hebrews acclaimed Jesus as the Messiah and King, with palm branches in their hands crying, Hosanna in the highest. Bless these palms, that we, bearing them, may go forth to meet Christ and follow him in the way that leadeth to eternal life, who liveth and reigneth in glory with thee and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Blessed be thou by him in whose honor thou shalt be burnt.
Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who of thy tender love towards mankind has sent thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross, that all humankind should follow the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may both follow the example of his patience and also be partakers of his resurrection through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thou hast not shut me up into the land of the enemy, but hast set my feet in a broad place. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. And my eye is consumed for very heaviness, yea, my soul and my body. Oh, my life is waxed out of sorrow. And my A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. 
Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival he used to call, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him. Pilate asked them, Why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him, and they began saluting Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull, and they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him, and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. 
Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now, so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and here breathed his love. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly this man was God's son. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. From the Gospel of John. After Jesus had taken the vinegar, he said, It is fulfilled. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. Holy Week is the ceremony by which we renew the Christian archetype of the suffering and death of Jesus and of his resurrection. Holy Week is one of the oldest observances of the Christian community and dates from the fourth century in Jerusalem. The earliest observances were sparse in detail and brief. St. Paul writes to the Christians in Corinth, Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures and that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures and that he appeared to Cephas then to the twelve, then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. In following centuries, the details of the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus have become more detailed and elaborate. The commemoration of the suffering, death, and rising of Jesus are the core of our faith and of our own personal lives. They are the values and philosophy by which a Christian lives every day. Today we begin the commemoration of the suffering of Jesus with this Palm Sunday liturgy. Some scholars argue that the meaning of the day was shifted when the Passion story began to be read in anticipation of Good Friday as it was today in this and many other parishes. Liturgists suggest the gospel reading for today should be the triumphal entry only. Criti liter liter liturgical critics tell us the Passion story was added to Palm Sunday because not enough people attended the Good Friday liturgy when the suffering and death of Jesus is properly observed. Unfortunately, any time the Passion is separated from the resurrection, an inappropriate emphasis on the sufferings and death of Jesus will be at the cost of the resurrection. 
good liturgy moves us much more rapidly and deeply into the sacred mysteries. The word mystery used in church does not mean something mysterious, but rather something that we cannot fully explain because of its vast significance. A sacred mystery is too deep and too fast to explain or even to put into words. The suffering, death, and resurrection of the Christ is a great mystery of our faith. We say in some of our liturgies, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. What are we observing in these Holy Week liturgies? Not just the past. In commemorating the suffering, death, and rising of Christ, we are not repeating historical events. Those events cannot actually be repeated. The liturgies of Holy Week do not create the original events. A liturgist explains it this way. The liturgies of Holy Week celebrate not what once happened to Jesus, but what is now happening among us as a people called to conversion, gathered in faith and gifted with the spirit of holiness. What is celebrated is mystery, not history. These liturgies celebrate God taking possession of our hearts at their deepest core, recreating us as a new human community. Three days of Pascha, Mitchell writes. We must com com create an understanding of commemoration because we do not necessarily have the mindset of Jesus, particularly when he tells us to remember or to do this in remembrance of me. In the mind of a Jew, to remember does not mean only to recall something of the past. It means to enter into the remembered event as a present reality. I find this very abstract to think about in English. In my Lakota language, we enter into a memory. We state a time marker such as one winter ago, and then we speak in something like present tense because we are in that memory and it becomes our present. Remembering these, of Holy, we, these events of Holy Week is like that. We make these events our present, and at the same time, we know that they took place in the past. We become a new community because today, we accompany Jesus as he enters the holy city of Jerusalem. In these next days, we will again watch Jesus suffer and die and lie in the tomb but just wait to see what comes in one week. The mystery of these historical events passes over into our liturgical commemoration this week and in this COVID year. Although we ought not to overemphasize the death of Jesus above the resurrection, we should turn our thoughts toward the death of Jesus insofar as we have just heard the passion read. We leave the resurrection until next Sunday and the following 50 days of Eastertide in our time, few people are comfortable around death. We no longer have regular exposure to death in our neighborhoods or in our extended families. In a course I once taught to future, future clergy, most participants were aged 40 and above, yet one-tenth of the seminarians had never known anyone who had died. Another 20% had never been to a funeral. One classroom activity in this course on aging and end of life required each person to state to the other members in the class, the day is coming when I will die and I will no longer be here. This activity was very difficult for some to say, even if it is the truth. Ash Wednesday is the day when our foreheads are marked with ashes and we are told to remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return. The point being is that every one of us is going to die, and so death is a part of our life. Chapter 4, the rule of St. Benedict tells us to keep death before your eye daily. We Benedictines end our monastic prayers each day saying, may God grant us a peaceful night and a perfect death. We say this, and then we lie down in our beds as we will someday lie down in our grave. On this Palm Sunday, by anticipation, and again on Good Friday, 
we take part on the suffering and death of Jesus. Hearing the Passion may not have the vividness of the 2004 Mel Gibson slasher film, The Passion, but it is still vivid in our mind's eye. As we consider what this death might teach us, I turn again to my Lakota First Nation for clues. Lakota teachings tell us death is a part of human existence. The elders will often remind us that only those things that are never born will never die. All things that are born will die. An elder once reminded me that the two most sacred days of our life are the day we are born and the day we die. On these two days, he said, we will know the most transformation we will ever experience. Both transform. Death transform and birth transforms. Jesus does not fear his suffering and death, but I think he reluctantly accepts it. I assume Jesus anticipated the inevitability of his suffering and death. Did you notice in the Passion account how almost all the verbs referring to Jesus are passive ones? Jesus seemingly accepts suffering and death because he opposed the empire, the political intrigue of the Roman occupiers and their complicit religious authorities. Even in our day, our Christian life is opposed, usually politely, by the society around us. As nice as Canadians try to be, there is a social and academic rule that one ought not to even be religious. We Christians still face the empire to some degree. Willing acceptance of suffering is hard to understand even if we know it is for some greater good. Among my Lakota people, we have a self-offering ceremony called the Sun Dance. It is done annually in the height of summer. Governments forbade it for almost 100 years, but we continued to perform it in secret. Dancers make a vow to dance either to ask for some favor or they dance in gratitude for receiving something they wanted. Lakota teaching says that we exist as a people in part because of those who offer themselves for the good of the nation. Mitakuye obwanikta chale chamuelo, the drum song says. I am doing this so my people may live. The dancer's skin is pierced in two locations and wooden skewers are inserted under the skin. The skewer ends are attached to ropes connected to a tree that represents all sacred power. Like Jesus, a sun dancer is connected to the sacred tree and it is there that he offers his suffering. Sun dancers lean away from the tree and must pull very hard in order to break the skin and to break free. When they tear their skin, we hear a pop and the connecting rope jumps about five meters away because of the considerable force required to break the bonds of flesh. Other sun dancers choose to be pierced on the upper shoulder and they pull a line of several heavy buffalo skulls until their piercing breaks. This can take a very long time, sometimes an entire day. A seminarian was once visiting my reservation and, and that summer was writing a paper on the theology and suffering of the writings of the 19th century Anglican theologian, Frederick Denison Mores. The seminarian attended a Sundance and watched a 10-year-old boy sobbing in pain as he danced by while dragging seven buffalo skulls so his people may live. The seminarian could not, not stop weeping, having seen such willing suffering. Suffering is hard to understand, but so is death. Therefore, when he received the vinegar, Jesus said, it is accomplished, and having bowed his head, he gave up his spirit. Ever since Jesus' death, we have been trying to understand and explain why this death happened and what it means. We have developed many theologies of Jesus' suffering, his execution, and his death. I doubt any of the theologies really satisfy our soul about how important this is for us in our lives today. Mostly, we experience death as something of a surprise and one that often comes too early. For the longest time after my parents died, I continued to realize how much I assumed that they would always be here. Anyone widowed 
can recall the many times you expect your loved one to come home, or you mean to tell them something and realize they are no longer here. We do not easily accept the total finality of death. How much we hope that like Harry Potter, a portion of us and of our loved ones would linger and not really be dead. It is a pagan belief that all life automatically goes on. In our Christian faith, we say death is total, final, complete, because we have seen Jesus lying in the grave. And it is only from this total finality that resurrection can occur. But what does the death of Jesus mean? We can only contemplate this mystery. We know it has something to do with the sacrificial love that is a part of the world God created. We know many examples of self-sacrifice, soldiers who protect their comrades from a grenade blast, friends who come to the aid of another friend, parents who willingly give their lives for their children. We are surrounded by sacrificial love, and we know the death of Jesus carries that theme, along with his opposition to the empire, the Roman institutions of his day, and the limitations of the religious authorities of that place. So what of our sacrificial love of, as Christians? Do we have it? For what and for whom could we use it? How can we live each day when we carry in our souls the philosophy of sacrificial love? When will we draw on it? After Jesus had taken the vinegar, he said, it is fulfilled. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit this suffering, death, and resurrection of Jesus are not an event to be observed only in Holy Week. They are not just doctrines to be believed. The death and resurrection of Jesus are themes and philosophies to be lived as surrender and trust in all of our life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, through whom all things were made, 
who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. as we follow Jesus in the way of the cross. Enable us to understand both the pain and love of his passion. Guide the whole church to honor him as Lord and to meet him on his way with adoration. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all who have lost their faith and those for whom belief is hard Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Save us, Lord, from being self-centered in our prayers and teach us faithfully to pray for those whom we have assured of our prayers. May we feel their needs as acutely as our own. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Father, look in mercy on those Christians who are disliked and distrusted by their fellow citizens in India, Pakistan, and elsewhere. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Look in pity, Father, on the pains of all your children, and grant that the passion of our Lord and his infinite love may make fruitful for good the tribulations of the innocent, the sufferings of the sick and the sorrows of the bereaved. In particular, we pray for Amanda Horsey, Elvira Hernandez, Marlin in hospital, Bev and Wayne, Laurie Guthrie and family, Sue Moore, Lily Parker and family, the Craigie family, Jules, Melissa and her mother, Mary Creighton, Dorothy and Jeff, Hamish, Anne and Charlie, Emiliano, Margaret and Art Searle, and those who mourn the loss of Joyce Hover, and those who mourn the loss of Constance Rennie. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. May Jesus, in his love, have mercy on the departed, especially Joyce Hofer, Trudy Ramsey, Sarah Morphy, and those whose years mind falls at this time, Harry Jeffrey Harding, Graham McNeil, Watson McNeil, Eva Sharon, Godfrey Gower, Maria Phyllis, Constance Rennie, rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Rejoicing in the fellowship of Mary, Mother of God, Barnabas, our patron, and all the saints of every time and place, we commit ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our God, to Thee, O Lord. Almighty and everlasting God, 
who has in Christ made manifest thy glory unto all people. We beseech thee that thou wouldst preserve those things which of thy mercy thou hast created, that thy church, being spread abroad through all the world, may steadfastly abide in the confession of thy holy name. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things and judge of all people, we acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. As our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Amen. 
in union, dear Lord, with the faithful at every altar of Thy church where Thy blessed body and blood are being offered to the Father. I desire to offer Thee praise and thanksgiving. I believe that Thou art truly present in the Holy Sacrament. And since I cannot now receive Thee sacramentally, I beseech Thee to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to Thee and embrace Thee with all the affections of my soul. Let me never be separated from Thee. Let me live and die in Thy love. Amen. Amen. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve our body and soul unto everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Christ crucified, draw you to himself to find in him a sure ground for faith, a firm support for hope, and the assurance of sins forgiven. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Thanks be to God.